Hello and welcome to our service of Holy Communion for Sunday the 16th of May. And today our online communion service is coming from St Peter's Church. I thought a change of scenery might be quite a nice thing. And I'm actually pre-recording this, as you might have guessed, uh, because at 8 o'clock on Sunday the 16th I will be at St Mary's in Enville celebrating our, eight our monthly 8 o'clock communion service there. So welcome to everybody who's watching on the St Peter's page and the St Mary's page and on the YouTube channel as well. It's really good to have you with us for our service this morning. And so we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. And so we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your Spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading for today comes from John's Gospel, chapter 17, beginning at verse 6. Jesus' last words of prayer before his arrest are for those who will remain in the world after he has gone, that they may remain faithful and true to the Father, as he has been. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I have revealed to you, to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words that you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now. But I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, as the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now 
when I was a teenager. The church that I went to had a small band who led some of the music in the morning service. And when I was 16, I decided that what I really wanted to do was play in that band. However, my main instrument at the time was the bass trombone. Now, I don't know if you know much about the bass trombone, but if you imagine a normal trombone, now imagine it's bigger and louder and lower. That's a bass trombone. It's a wonderful instrument, and I wish I played it more. I don't play it very often anymore. And it has many excellent qualities, but subtlety is not one of them. And so although I tried playing it in the church band a couple of times, it really didn't work at all. Now I also played the piano and I thought maybe that would be a way forward, but after about seven years of fruitless piano lessons, I think my teacher, who was also the church organist, had written me off as a hopeless case, so that wasn't really an option either. So I decided there was only one thing for it. I'd have to learn how to play the guitar. So in the July, after I'd finished my GCSE exams, I borrowed my grandma's old classical guitar, sat down with a hymn book that had some chord charts in the back, locked myself in my room for about three months and taught myself how to play. Later that year, we had a church weekend away and at some point in that weekend, with all the confidence of a 16 year old, and I'm not sure I'd do it now, but I sidled up to Gareth, who was in charge of the band, and said, I've learned to play the guitar. Can I join the band? Amazingly, he didn't say no, and so I began to play in the church band. At first, I'd sit at the back, strumming along. Then, after a few weeks, they gave me a microphone to put by the guitar so that it could uh, pick it up. And then, after a few more weeks, they actually turned the microphone on. And eventually I got my own guitar which could plug in and I began to sing a bit as well and gradually I began to move forward and I'd uh, lead the odd song and then the songs for a whole service. And eventually Gareth and I became a bit of a double act, playing and singing and leading the music, leading the worship together. And then, one day, Gareth said, I'm not here next week, are you okay to lead on your own? And I was terrified. All this time, I'd had Gareth alongside me, next to me, showing me what to do, ready to step in and take over if I got myself in a muddle. And suddenly, he wasn't there. Suddenly, I was on my own. Now, on Thursday, we celebrated Ascension Day. And Ascension Day marks a whole new chapter in the life of the church. For years, Jesus' followers had had him around, showing them what to do, working alongside them, ready to step in and correct them when they went off course. And although, yes, he left them on Good Friday, he came back on Easter Sunday, and they didn't exactly have very much to do in between. But now, suddenly, he wasn't there anymore. He was gone for good, and they were on their own. And I would imagine they, too, were terrified. I will always be grateful to Gareth for the way he supported, encouraged, mentored me in those early days of getting involved in church life. I can only imagine how terrible I was at, at times, how many mistakes I made. But if I'd only ever played when Gareth was alongside me, I'd never have developed further. And I've had some wonderful experiences over the years since then, playing music in church, in churches and at conferences and festivals across Britain and Europe. And I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today if it wasn't for those experiences. There comes a point in every apprentice's training when they have to step out on their own. Like a mother bird encouraging her fledgling chicks out of the nest, hoping their wings are strong enough to keep them airborne, Jesus knew that if he was to stay, the gospel would forever be tied to where he was. The early church would never be able to spread its wings and fly from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. In John's gospel, 
Jesus prays for his disciples, saying, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one. Jesus has left us, but he's not left us alone. And next Sunday we celebrate Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit, who lives in each one of us. And Jesus has also left us each other. The work of the church in seeking out the lost, in caring for the orphan and the widow, in standing up to injustice and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, crucified, risen and ascended, is not simply the task of a chosen few. And it's certainly not simply the task of those of us with dog collars. It's the task of the whole church, here and around the world, each and every one of us, who is baptised in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so my question for you today, you as individuals and you as a church, is this. What will you do to continue the work of Jesus in the world this week? Maybe there's someone who's been on your mind who you've been meaning to check on for a while, but you haven't quite got round to it. Maybe you could give them a ring or pop round for a cup of tea and a chat now that the rules are beginning to relax. Maybe you can think of someone, perhaps someone in church or someone in the community, who you've noticed is particularly good at something, someone who has a real calling to something. Could you try and encourage them in that vocation this week? Or maybe there's a difficult decision or difficult conversation that you've been putting off making. Even though you know it's the right thing to do, because you're not sure what the consequences will be. Could you ask God for the courage to do the right thing this week? Or maybe the idea that you might be able to join in with God's work in the world, the idea that God might be able to use you with all your skills and all your experiences and all of your flaws, the idea that God might actually like you for who you are. Maybe that's a new idea to you this week. Could you make a first step towards following God, following Jesus, this week. Jesus has left us to continue his work in the world, but he's not left us alone. We have the Holy Spirit, and we have each other, and together we can do amazing things. So we join together in the creed, the prayer of Jesus' followers. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we come to our prayers of intercession, and these are special prayers for the time between Ascension Day and Pentecost. And the response for our prayers today, when I pray, Lord, come to bless us, would you respond and fill us with your Spirit? Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. And so we pray for God to fill us with his Spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. 
Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident of your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given us by the risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, he has given us the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And so we offer one another a sign of God's peace, and do share in the comments those words, peace be with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise, we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. 
Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ, with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you, and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that Christ died for you, yet still lives for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. In the body of Christ. In the blood of Christ. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son Jesus Christ has sent us all into the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news which we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining me for our online service today. A reminder that our services uh, we have at eight o'clock at St Mary's and half past nine at St Peter's in church and then this evening we will have evening prayer at half past six on the Facebook pages. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.